Well, I'm John Elliott, and I want to welcome all of you here today for a first-of-its-kind announcement and an exciting announcement. And I want to start with a couple of specific welcomes today. First, the Gleaner's staff. They have endured comprehensive change, dramatic growth, and an environment that, frankly, is physically and emotionally tiring these days. And they've done it all for the privilege of serving our neighbors and even more neighbors. So thank you, staff. I need to thank the board. If there's ever a time we need wisdom and guidance and leadership backing us up, now is the time. And our board chair, Georgiana Rinal, and our board vice chair, Chad Meyer, are here as well. I've lost track of where, but somewhere. The National Guard and reliable staffing have become critical players, and frankly, the difference between us having to reduce the distribution we do for less manpower versus doubling the number of meals and distribution. So a special thank you to the National Guard and Dion and his reliable staffing crew. The last special welcome I'd like to mention is our mission partners, and I choose that phrase deliberately. Those mission partners, some who've been with us for a long time and some who are new to the Gleaners family, Anthem, the Andretti, Harding, and Steinbrenner racing teams, Indianapolis Urban League, and Bank of America. These are extraordinary times, but why are we here? We're here because a meal gap that has negatively impacted our state for decades is simply not acceptable. The fact that food insecurity disproportionately impacts minority and rural populations more than others is not acceptable. The fact that hunger makes the top 10 chronic health conditions worse for hungry neighbors and costs those struggling families an additional $1 billion a year in this state is not acceptable. We must have a sense of urgency. We must acknowledge the connectivity of hunger to other factors of poverty, employment, education, and a mix of social barriers to success. We must be willing to admit what we don't know, to learn more about those we serve and, frankly, those we don't yet serve, to try new things, to work harder, and to achieve more as a result. But I'm confident in the success of the No One Runs on Empty strategy. We will close that meal gap together because we built the right team. As it goes in racing, as it goes in corporate America, we need the right team here. Why this team in particular? Because we are the leaders in our industries. And together, we have a greater chance of success. The COVID-19 pandemic has doubled the need and renewed our sense of urgency. It's further emphasized the connectivity between hunger and health, hunger and employment, hunger and inequity, even racism. The pandemic has affirmed the validity of and the key deliverables within our strategic plan. That strategy placed us in a stronger position to succeed during this pandemic, and it's helped lead sustainable, sustainable meaningful change in every community we serve but it's also emphasized how much is left undone. We have an opportunity amidst this multi-year economic recovery from the pandemic to learn for the first time who every hunger neighbor, hungry neighbor is and to serve them better. We'll need highly effective partners like the Indianapolis Urban League to find them and to feed them. The No One Runs on Empty campaign will focus on awareness, volunteerism, advocacy, and fundraising. We need fuel just like a car, right? So fundraising is that fuel. We have an ambitious goal to provide 10 million meals, but we must no longer accept a 53 million meal gap that has grown unacceptably larger amidst this pandemic. This strategy would not be possible without the generous and ongoing support of Anthem, and in a way you could say Anthem's generosity is like giving Colton a 100-mile head start in the Indianapolis 500. I don't think he'll need it to win, by the way. We're, you know, we're already checking with the odds makers and betting in favor. So, We're grateful that Bank of America has come on board with a first matching gift, affirming the strategy, putting us further ahead, and winning the race to close the meal gap for hungry neighbors. 
You too can follow Anthem's lead by donating at gleaners.org slash no one runs on empty. And I'm now honored to introduce John Galena, CFO of Anthem. Anthem has been a generous mission partner for Gleaners for a long time. They are not new to the Gleaners family. But that partnership has grown in meaningful and impactful ways in recent years, and John, we're deeply grateful. Good morning. Thank you, John. And I'd like to thank all of you for being here with a special thanks to the Andretti Harding Steinbrenner Autosport and the Indianapolis Urban League for joining us today. Our community is facing very challenging and difficult times. The impact of COVID-19 and the recent examples of social injustice have illuminated the pervasiveness of racial inequities and health disparities that have plagued our community for far too long. At Anthem, our commitment to improve lives and communities begins here in Indianapolis, a place we have called home for more than 75 years, and we are taking action to help address and overcome these critical health disparities. No one should live without the basic building blocks of health. Chief among them is food. But here in Indiana, nearly one million people from diverse communities are struggling with hunger, and one in six children struggle to get enough food. To change that, we've focused on addressing food insecurity at the community level to help people and families live strong, healthier lives through better food access and nutrition. That's why today we are pleased to continue our longstanding partnership with Gleaners Food Bank, and we are announcing a $1 million matching grant to the No One Runs on Empty campaign. And we're asking the community to join us to help fight against hunger and other health inequities impacting our community. For every donation from the community, the Anthem Foundation will match that donation dollar for dollar up to the $1 million. If we come together as a community and reach our goal of $2 million, we will be able to provide 10 million meals to Hoosiers in need. We know that nutritious food is essential to good health, quality of life, and avoiding chronic illness. Today, lack of access to food is one of the most pervasive issues affecting our nation's health, keeping millions of Americans from achieving their best health. Through our partnership with Gleaners, we look forward to being facilitators of sustainable, meaningful change in the communities we serve and realizing the tremendous impact we can make right here in our home state to eliminate those health disparities and health inequities that are impacting the health of our communities. Thank you. Great news, huh? Thank you, John. It's my privilege now to introduce Michael Andretti, representing not just three racing teams, but new mission partners in the Gleaners family. And as we stood together at the iconic Indianapolis Motor Speedway in May for the Gleaners Mega Fresh Mobile Pantry Distribution, I saw heartfelt compassion, I saw commitment to the mission, and an eagerness to make a difference together, and I believe that we will. Michael? Thank you. Well, I gotta say, it's a real honor to be here. Um, you know, we uh, 
had the privilege to tour this building uh, a few months ago, and, and I gotta say, I just, uh, it's hard to believe this is in our backyard. I, I really didn't understand uh, the enormity of <laughs> how huge this, uh, this facility is and, and what it does for our community. And, uh, um, you know, we're just so very, very proud to be a part of it, and uh, we wanna thank uh, Anthem uh, for stepping up and helping uh, make all this happen as well. It's, uh, it's for such a great cause. You know, we are out here to make sure no one runs in on empty, especially Colton, for sure, <laughs> in the race. <laughs> the other thing I'm pretty excited about that I just heard about this 100 mile head start we get, we need to talk about that. <laughs> All right, cool, cool. No, but um, again, we are just really honored to be a part of this. I've been uh, coming to Indianapolis for 50-some years, you know, with my father raising here. And, it, and Indy, uh, at the time of growing up, was a second home. And, and uh, in 2006, I actually moved here, and, and, it, and it's been my home. And, uh, you know, for us, it's just uh, great to be able to come and give a little bit back to the great community of Indianapolis, uh, you know, because it's done so much for not only myself, but our whole family. And uh, again, we are really honored to be a part of this program. So thank you. I feel like it's a wardrobe change. I'll take my mask off temporarily, my eyes back on. Every community facing challenges needs exceptional leaders who are highly respected, who are impactful, but most importantly, they speak for neighbors who need their voices amplified. And you know, I think a lot about those we're able to feed, but I think even more about those we're not yet able to feed. And for me, one of the most important outcomes of No One Runs on Hungry and success is that we will find everyone who is hungry and find a way to feed them. But we obviously have not been able to do that on our own despite four decades of trying. We're admitting we need help. We're admitting we need new partners. I've served with Tony on his board. I know him well. I respect him. And I've asked him to come here today and be that voice for those we're not yet serving. So, Tony. So, good morning, everyone. First of all, it's an honor, pleasure, and privilege to be here with you. Prior to the pandemic, it was estimated the one million people, hear me again, one million people were food insecure in Indiana. That's a rate higher than the national average for Hispanics and Latin and Hispanic and African American households, where one in four children struggle to get enough food on a daily basis. 28% of African Americans in Indianapolis live in poverty. 28%, that is out of 200,000, 230,000 African Americans. 32% live in places that have low access to healthy food options. 82,000 African American residents live in food deserts and have limited access to nutritious foods. Everything connects to everything. So that means you're likely eating unhealthy foods, which means you have a higher prevalence of diseases such as diabetes, obesity, and heart disease within the African American and Latino communities. The COVID-19 pandemic called attention to the disparities that we knew existed prior to it. Uh, as the Urban League, it also opened the doors for us as an agency to become more engaged in the fight against hunger. As we were transitioning to a remote operation, I started getting phone calls from senior living communities with residents who were concerned about their access to food. 
I called John Elliott, and without any hesitation, he connected me to Mary, and next thing you know, those senior living communities were getting meals delivered to them, food boxes, if you will. Then lo and behold, <laughs> those calls didn't stop. Now I had just people from the community at large calling and saying, I lost my job, my wages got cut, we need to get food. So I reached out to John again and said, we'd like to stand up a drive-through food distribution at the Urban League. We are now 13 weeks in, and with support from Gleaners and other community partners, we have easily distributed over 20,000 meals at the Urban League. And this is something that we did not do prior to the pandemic. And so efforts like this, we talk about no one runs on empty is crucial. We see the work that Gleaners has done with major large scale events at the Motor Speedway, the State Fairgrounds, the work that it's doing with IPS, Eastern Star Church. And then I can tell you there are a myriad of partners that we invite in each Tuesday to make sure that they are delivering food supplies back to their respective neighborhoods. So this campaign is critical, and so we need everyone to step up and support it, because the reality of it is, is that while we're reopening the economy, not everyone's gotten their jobs back. Not everyone has had their wages fully restored. And so it's going to take all of us leading in the fight against hunger, every single one of us. So I want to applaud Anthem, Andretti Motorsports, Bank of America, all of the entities that are leaning in to fight hunger in our community and across our state. Because this is, this is crucial. We talk about pandemic, we talk about protests, it's not just about police reform and accountability. It's about families that are struggling each and every day to put food on their tables. And so we pledge to continue to work with Gleaners and other organizations in this fight against hunger. We need to eliminate the health disparities and the health inequities that result from it. And again, we just want Indianapolis to become the best city possible and a place where all can, can do more than just survive, but thrive and to work towards prosperity. So thank you for allowing us to be a part of this today. around waiting for somebody to do the wrap-up remarks and it suddenly occurred to me that's me sorry <laughs> I hope you'll forgive me when you realize what a beautiful car that is and the amazing no one runs on empty message on that I think it's pretty straightforward as, as Brian pointed out though in calling the race he's gonna have to be really really careful that you don't run out of fuel on the track so well thank you to each of you and I genuinely believe what I said earlier, as one team, we will win this race, and not just the one on that amazing oval track, we will win the race defined by closing the meal gap. Whether it's the 53 million it was going into the pandemic, or it's the 100 million or so that unfortunately we face now, we can and will do it together. And please remember to join us at gleaners.org slash no one runs on empty to get a head start on that race and give him a few more laps head start. For our friends at the media, thank you for helping raise awareness of this daunting challenge, as well as the optimistic opportunity we're facing together. And several of us will be happy to do one-on-one -on -one interviews if you're so inclined. But that concludes the program. Thank you.